what's going on everybody? It's your boy Marshall live and you guys uh, today is January 20th 2021. I don't know where in the world you may be tuning into this video from but chances are that you know that some shit's going down in the world right now and uh, there seems to be a lot of divide. There seems to be a lot of anger. There seems to be a lot of hostility but more than anything in my network which means most of you who are watching this video, those of you who are listening to this on the podcast, that means that if you're like me, which I know that you are, it means that right now you're just feeling a little overwhelmed. You may be feeling a little anxious, right? Like uh, you may be wondering what's going on in the world, but you know that it doesn't really matter. So you've been trying to refocus, you've been trying to re-energize, you've been trying to take your attention away from all the things that don't matter and really hunker down on what it is you're here to do. And so I was just thinking today after going through social media and seeing a lot of crazy stuff is I was just like, yo, bro, like how, how, how can you make this better, Marshall? Because I know a lot of people are getting online and they want to, you know, preach the truth or why people are stupid. And it's just like, you guys like, oh dude, like first off, I've been saying this, I've been saying this for so long for two years now, nobody cares. Like nobody cares if you're right. Like you can sit and preach and do all the things that you want, but like at the end of the day, I promise you, like people only care about themselves and nobody cares if you're right. Like even for the people who agree with you, like at best they're gonna go, oh yeah, like, yeah, he's right. Or they're gonna leave you a comment and be like, yeah, girl, that's what's up. Like, but that's it. And then what? And then we just go back on to living. And so I just thought, Marshall, what is the best way that I can contribute in this time right now? Because the honest truth is, Gil and Gang, you guys know my mission. And I'm on a mission to save a billion lives and save a billion lives with the power of storytelling and vulnerability. And you guys know it's because I wanted to kill myself from the time I was 13 until I finally tried to kill myself at the age of 23. But more importantly than that, like, you guys, once I tried to kill myself, I, look, the second that I took all that shit, like, as I was falling out, which I thought was to my death, like, I had this instant regret. Like, I had, I didn't want to die, I realized in that moment. And so when I woke up in the, in the emergency room the next day, I was like, or the next morning, I was all by myself. It was all alone. It was dark. And I just had this like overwhelming gasp. I'm like, <gasps> like back to life, like, <gasps> you know, like, thank God I'm still alive. But, and I don't know if you guys can tell me, like maybe there's something in your life that you're not necessarily proud of or that you're not necessarily, you know, uh, happy that you chose to try to do. But if you're like me, what I did is I just, I was ashamed. I felt guilty, I felt so stupid, and so I literally didn't tell anybody about that attempted suicide. Like, I just tucked it all down deep and pretended like it never happened. Which, you got, I mean, come on, you guys already know how that turns out, right? It just festered inside of me, this, this pain, this guilt, this anger, this rage, and I wanted to let it out, but I never knew how to. And then I met this good friend of mine who became like a freaking brother to me. And what Dustin taught me, he taught me how to be vulnerable. You see, Dustin would sit around and he would tell me all his stories about how he was struggling, things he was going through. Now, I never opened up to Dustin about any of my stuff. I just sat there as a sounding board and soaked it up in. As a matter of fact, uh, when I met Dustin at the age of 20, 26, uh, Dustin was at the time the first like, guy, uh, the first ever man to be like, yo, bro, I love you, right? Like, it was weird to me up until that point for one of my friends or for another guy to be like, yo, bro, I love you. But being around Dustin, he taught me how to love and he taught me vulnerability. So when he was struggling four years after I tried to kill myself and he ended up calling me one night and I ignored his call because I was just dealing with my own shit, my own guilt, my own shame, my own embarrassment. I didn't want to tell him anything. I, I just didn't know, right? And so I retreated. Now, I don't know if you guys are dealing with anything in your life right now. Uh, maybe it's physical, maybe it's mental health, maybe it's uh, emotional health, maybe it's spiritual health. You know what? Hell, maybe it's financial health. I know a lot of people out there are struggling financially, but the point of it is, is there's somewhere probably in your life at the time of watching this video right now, especially with everything that's freaking going on with social media, where you're feeling uh, pressured. Maybe you're feeling ashamed. Maybe you're feeling guilty. And so what you're doing is contracting, right? Like you can find your, and you know what I'm talking about. You can feel yourself contracting uh, when you know you should be expanding and going into the fear, trying to overcome it. But it's like, yo, like, how do I do that? And so what happens is you contract, right? And so first and foremost, Foremost, I just like, dude, it's not your fault. All right. You know what I'm saying, girl? Like, it, like you got this. Everybody's been there before. It's just, we all have different details, but at the end of the day, there's lots of us that feel just like you feel right now. It's just different details. And what I mean is like, for example, when Dustin called me that night, 
you know, in 2014, February, 2000, March, 2014, um, his voicemail, he was like, yo, bro, it's Dustin. He was crying. He's crying, yo, bro, it's Dustin. And he says, um, Marshall, I, I, uh, I really need to talk to you, man. I right, call me back and get this. All right, late. All right. That was the voicemail I got. And I, what I wanted to do was call Dustin right up and, and just share with them. But I didn't even know how to do that. I didn't even know how to cultivate that inside of me because I contracted in fear and in all these self-doubt and all these limitations that I had placed on myself or allowed to be placed on me, but I had just contracted, you know, my stepdad telling me I'm a worthless piece of shit. Uh, my stepdad telling me that I'm gonna be another worthless Gillen, that I'm, I'm so goddamn unobservant, I'm so goddamn ungrateful. These are the things he would tell me from the time I was six years old up until, well shit, even now at the age of 36, so for the last 30 years, right? And so I would let all that stuff make me contract when my best friend needed me most, and I never called him back, I said, I'll call him tomorrow. Tomorrow turned into, oh, I'll call him this weekend. Oh, this weekend turned into, I'll call him on Monday. Monday turned into, I'll call him later this week. And all of a sudden, one month went by, and I get a phone call at 4.32 in the morning, and it's Dustin's sister, Paige. I pick up, hello? And she says, Marshall, Dustin hanged himself last night. He's dead. And in that moment, my whole world seemed like it collapsed. Not obviously because I lost my friend, but because it's like, I know what that moment is like. I know what that moment is like when you're so mad and you're so alone and you're so fucking over it that you're like, fuck it. But I also know what it feels like to make that choice and feel instant regret. And I'm blessed to know what it's like to be able to wake up from that mistake. And so for me, my whole life has been based on helping people share those stories of these guilty stories we have inside of us because I, you don't know who you're going to save. I always wonder if I had picked up the phone and called Dustin back, if I had ever shared my story with Dustin and what I had been through, would that story have saved his life? I don't know. I don't feel guilty about it now. I've come to terms with all of, all of that and I understand that this is my path and that Dustin is not necessarily gone. Dustin and I are still saving lives together. I mean, shit, we're on a mission to save a billion lives who save a billion lives to the power of vulnerability and storytelling. And so um, right now, it's just like, man, you guys know I'm emotional. I can't help it. But it's like, um, I also understand from my journey at this point that hurt people hurt people. And I see a lot of people in the world, a lot of people online right now who are just, they're so mean. And the thing that it is, is a lot of you guys want to react in anger and you want to be mean back to them. But to me, it breaks my heart because I don't see people being mean to each other. I see people hurting. I see people hurting so fucking bad that they're doing these crazy things that they don't even want to do. And they, and they don't even have the self-awareness to understand what they're doing. And so, um, I didn't know this was gonna happen when I turned on the camera. Um, so you guys see, I brought, I, I bust out my whiteboard. Um, I built my entire brand doing whiteboard videos uh, for my audience and training. Uh, you guys may not know, but I'm a five-time college dropout. But um, uh, I had a full academic ride to go to school, uh, uh, college, Southern Illinois University when I graduated high school uh, to be a, a teacher. And so I've always loved teaching. And so when I uh, was seeing all the things online today, and um, I was just thinking that it just hurt my heart. And instead of trying to turn the camera around and be like, yo, I'm right. And this is like, I was like, man, what the fuck can I do? You know, what can I do? And I know a lot of you who are watching this, um, you feel like me and you're like, what can I do too? Dude, like the only thing we could do right now is spread love and positivity, experience, knowledge, acceptance, forgiveness. But most importantly, first and foremost, forgiveness and acceptance of ourself and love of ourself so we can be that reflection for other people to see. And so some of you, you know, may see me crying and you're like, why are you crying, bro? Well, the thing is I'm crying because I'm emotional thinking about people hurting. And I'm blessed because when I show up like this on camera, it allows me to be the reflection that maybe you need to see right now to let your emotion out, to accept how you're feeling and to forgive yourself, how you've been, to forgive yourself for how you've been making yourself feel. But what I thought I could do is that I was like, I think that I'm just gonna try to share the most valuable pieces of advice that I can possibly share. And so um, this is video one, and over the next 28 days, I'm just gonna pop on here, and I'm gonna share with you guys one lesson, one piece of advice that I've learned over the last 36 years um, 
that has changed everything for, for me. Uh, you guys pretty much know my story. I just told you a little bit of it, but you know, all throughout my 20s, I was an addict. I was uh, homeless numerous times. I'm divorced. Uh, I've been uh, in tons of fights and in and out of jail, um, multiple DUIs. Uh, uh, I've been involved in violent acts of crime. Um, I mean, all kinds of crazy shit, drug dealing, drug, all the things. Um, I luckily never got caught and went to prison, but just like my life has not always been the best because I felt unworthy, but I, I inside I was a high performer. I just didn't know at the time. And so that energy had to go somewhere and it came out as destruction. And so uh, right now, more than anything, it's important to me uh, to be able to be a reflection for somebody who may need to know how they can put their life back together. And so um, I'm going to do my uh, lesson right now. Um, and I want you guys to grab a pen and a paper uh, and write this stuff down because I'm going to be giving you guys some stuff. But specifically, the advice I want to share today is literally the most, uh, it's, the, it's the most valuable piece of advice I've ever gotten. Um, and it changed my life. And I'm going to share it with you guys. Uh, but the topic that we're going to be talking about today is human energy. Okay? So you guys can write that at the top of your paper. Human energy. Okay? That's what we're going to be talking about. So there's a few things I want to explain to you about human energy. Um, but before I do, I just want to share a quick story with you guys. Uh, in 2017, uh, I had just started... Um, working online like really big time full time as an influencer. Uh, what I had did is in November of 2016, I invested $1,000 to buy a, a, so, a program, a digital course. I had $1,017 in my account. And so when I bought the program, I only had $17 up to my name. Um, and it was to teach me how to do social media marketing for other businesses. So from an, it was from an entrepreneur named Ty Lopez. And so I took the Ty Lopez course. I made my money back in the first 48 hours and I went out to make like 17 grand like in the first like, like month or something it's fucking stupid. It was so simple, but I hated it. Uh, I hated it. And so what I did is I started making content online, uh, documenting my journey to become a public speaker. I, uh, I called my shot back in 2017, March 2017. I'm like, yo, this is my journey, ba da 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 And so uh, I was making content every day uh, basically since then. And when that happened, uh, about six months when I, after I started, uh, one piece of my content, um, which is just proof that one piece of content can change your life. Uh, uh, one piece of my content I made, it was actually a vulnerable video of me crying. It was the day that I realized I was born to do the mission I just shared with you guys. Uh, and a guy by the name of Cole Hatter was the one who delivered it to me. And um, what happened is uh, he changed my life. Him and his wife saw the video of me crying and felt how powerful it was. Uh, he hosted an event. Him and his wife hosted an event uh, in Las Vegas called Thrive, Make Money Matter. Uh, it's all about how can we take our money and give it to people who are in need and make our money matter. And so um, I got invited to go to that event. Uh, he uh, gave me and my girlfriend at the time two tickets. Uh, all access, so I think they were like four thousand dollar tickets each. So like he gave us eight thousand dollars worth of tickets to go to this event, and so I go to this event, and as part of the big baller ass package, like you got to do all the behind the scenes stuff, you got to go to all these private parties, and on one night it was a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday event. On Saturday night, uh, I got invited to go to a. Uh, a, a cocktail party with all of the speakers of Thrive. So if you guys were to go back and Google like 2017 Thrive Make Money Matter, you guys would see the speakers that were there. Talk to people like Grant Cardone, Ty Lopez, Brad Lee, you know, uh, billionaires. There's uh, Billy Jean is marketing. There's, uh, oh, there's so many people I can't even think of, man. Like uh, uh, Chris Record, uh, 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 Jordan Harbinger. I mean, like, dude, there's, there's a ton of them. Point being is that here, here's this event with multiple millionaires and there was even two multiple billionaires and what happens is as this cocktail party happens I get to walk up into the uh, the speaker's cocktail dinner and it's in the Hard Rock at Las Vegas which is no longer there but in the old Hard Rock in Las Vegas you go to the top and the escalators like on your way out to the pool and there's this little tiny glass room and I'm talking tiny you guys like it couldn't have been no more than fucking 20 by 12, like it was not a very big room. And so now here we are, I'm with the inner circle people, which is like uh, all of the Thrive community, which is probably like maybe 20 of us. And then all the other people in this tiny room are all of these multiple millionaires and multiple billionaires, okay? So here's the thing, I've been working online for a while, I'm making a little bit of money, but now here I am in this room with like real ballers, okay? Real ballers, right? And so what do you guys think some of the stories where I might've been telling myself? What are some of the stories I may have been telling myself about myself do you guys think, right? Things like, what am I doing in this room? 
I don't belong here. I can't add any value to these people's lives. They're gonna know that I'm a fraud. They're gonna know that I just bought some course and I'm just some social media marketing agency fraud, right? Like these are the things that are going through my mind. I am standing in a room with direct access to these people that could change my life that just literally take me to the next level for free. I'm standing here by the goodness of some content in my heart. It earned my, my way into this room and the only thing I could feel was unworthiness. I just felt like, fuck, I know it's a massive opportunity, but like, I can't do it. Like, I, I don't have anything to give these people. And, I, and I, I'm sad, you know, I'm fucking sad. And so what I did is, um, there was a table of food over in the corner, like a nice spread. And so I just walked over to the table um, and I, I just started eating, you know, and I'm facing the wall and I just keep thinking to myself, if I can stand here long enough, maybe nobody will notice me because I'll look like I fit in, right? Man, maybe I should go. No, I should stay. No, bro, just fuck it, just go. No, Marshall, come on, this is the opportunity of your life. No, bro, just fuck it. You know you're not going to go talk to anybody. Just go. Like, come on, man. Like, you can do this. And the next thing I know, I feel a tap on my shoulder. I turn around. And it's this gentleman who's a little, maybe a decade older than me at the time. Maybe he's like 42 or something, right? Good looking guy, soft spoken. And he's like, I mean, he's like, what's up? You know? And me being me, I was like, oh, what's up, man? I said, oh, not much. Just, uh, you know, hanging out. And he's like, Are you? and this, this guy ended up being one of my good friends. Uh, and this is just so him, but he says, um, oh, again, I'm not trying to get emotional. I just, it was emotional in the moment, you know, he said, oh, are you doing it? Are you feeling okay? I said, oh, yeah, man, I'm good. I said, I just feel a little, you know, I wanted to break down crying right there, but I said, I just feel a little silly. I said, I just, uh, I said, I bought a course. I'm a social media marketing agency owner. And, um, I don't know what I'm doing in this room. I don't feel like I belong here. Uh, I don't have, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I can add any value to these guys. Okay. And this is when I got the most valuable piece of advice I've ever gotten in my whole life. Rich put his hands on my shoulder and he looked at me in the eye and he said, you know, bro, there's nothing you can go get us that we can't, uh, no, there's nothing you can get anybody in this room that we can't buy with money. He said, but you know what you can give us? Generosity, friendship, camaraderie, humor, love, acceptance. He said, you've got to understand that just how you choose to show up in the moment with your human energy, that's more valuable than anything. He said, all these rich people and all these successful pricks, he said, they're in the same rooms with the same type of people all the time. And, and it's never about genuine connection. It's about business, business, business. He's like, how you choose to show up is more powerful than anything, Marshall. It's more valuable than anything because it's you. It's how can you show up and share your energy and hold space that might change somebody's life. Here's what I want you guys to write down, Gillian Gang. Write this down. Your human worth has nothing to do with your net worth. Write that down. Your human worth has nothing to do with your net worth. You guys, money is not even real. For most of my life, I let the lack of feeling like I was wealthy enough limit me from literally living my life. I have let it limit me from showing up as who I am. We have all got to accept and understand the fact that money is simply a byproduct of value. It's an energy exchange. And so we have got to put out the type of energy that warrants somebody wanting to learn that human energy so much that they're willing to take money and pay us. Because you guys, money, listen, human energy is the most valuable thing on this entire planet. And I'll prove it to you. I'll prove it to you. What, what, like just right now in your head, maybe even like you might be all alone, but just say them out loud. What's, name one thing to you right now that you think is more valuable than human energy. Name one thing. Say, just say it. Money, right? Well, Marshall, money's more valuable than human energy. To who? How? How? Let's take a step back. How do you get money? How do most people in America and in the world get money? 
They got to go to work. So what do they do at work? They've got to output what? Human energy to be able to get that money. What else? What's something else that could be more valuable than human energy? What? Natural gold, diamonds, silver, platinum, what? Okay, let's say that. Let's say, still, let's say precious metals. Still, you gotta go out and mine for it. You gotta get them out of the mining fields. You gotta get them appraised. You gotta get them shipped. You gotta get them sold. Takes what to do that? Human energy. Well, cryptocurrency. Who invented blockchain? Who oversees that? Who trades it? Who builds the platforms to trade it? Who builds the platforms to put it in your wallet? Where did all that come from? Somebody's brain, somebody's feelings. Human energy. You see what I'm saying? Nothing's more valuable than human energy. As a matter of fact, a real good friend of mine by the name of Caleb Maddox, he was telling me that when he was 16 years old, when he was 16 years old, multi-millionaire, six-year-old, uh, top 20 under 20 entrepreneur in the world, Caleb Maddox is telling me this story. He's like, when I was 16, I went and met with a 27-year-old billionaire. And he said, Marshall, I'm telling you, man, this guy doesn't meet with people. So just to get like 10 minutes of his time is like a really big deal. And so Caleb tells me, he goes, I go to the meeting and I'm talking to the guy and it's 10 minutes. And then all of a sudden it's 20 minutes and then it's an hour. He said the meeting went for seven hours, you guys, seven hours. Caleb finally had to stop him and just be like, yo, listen, like I know how valuable your time is. I know what you charge for this 16 year old, right? To a 27 year old billionaire. He said, why? He said, why are you giving me this time? And the 27 year old billionaire said, dude, it's your energy. He said, nobody I surround myself with comes at me with that kind of energy, how you show up. Even to a multiple billionaire, he was willing to clear his schedule just because of the human energy he was able to decipher and to learn from that person. And so here's what I want you guys to take away from this. I know a lot of you are tripping out right now. You wanna build something big, you're on this mission, you're not sure how you're gonna start it, you're not sure if it's ever gonna work out, but I promise if you accept the fact that your human worth has nothing to do with your net worth and you just work on, on being the best reflection you can possibly be for others. So when you show up, you're in charge of your energy and you watch how your life transforms. You watch how people start to change around you and you watch how your reality starts to become more of the one that's filled with things that you actually want and not with all the shit that you don't want. And it first and foremost decides where's that focus going? Where focus goes, energy flows. Turn off the news, cut out the social media. Nobody gives a shit if you're right about all this stuff. Focus on what you can focus on, which is sharing your story, perfecting your message, and going out and helping the old you that needed somebody back then when nobody else was around. Be that person today. Be the adult that the child you need, the child and you needed. We're on a mission to save a billion lives and save a billion lives. The power of vulnerability and storytelling. And I need your help, Gillen Gang. So if you got value out of this, make sure you like this video. Make sure you share it with somebody. Now, it's most important though, because the algorithm's all jacked up. I want you guys to make sure you either subscribe to the channel on YouTube, that you're following my page here on Instagram, that you like the page on Facebook, or that you subscribe to the podcast. I'm gonna be going live every day for the next 20, that's not true, not live, but I'm gonna be sharing a video uh, every single day for the next 28 days on the 28 best pieces of advice that I can give you that helps save my life, and maybe we can save some lives together. And if you guys want to know how you story this is for you storytellers specifically in the crowd if you're a storyteller and you want to learn how to get paid on your phone for public speaking make sure you guys go to toppaidspeaker.com and you guys get registered for my next three-day event all right i love you guys i'll see you in tomorrow's video if you guys got value from this share it with somebody you love i'll see you soon peace love you guys